Hello there. Um, my name is Theodore, and um, I saw this question on, uh, you know, ask an expert in uh, why is it, and uh, I would like to provide an answer for this. So basically, um, you just want to enrich your composition by hopefully adding more advanced chords, and you're uh, composing in the key of G. All right. Well, um, so I uh, added some uh, text on the screen, and uh, hopefully you, you can bring that home. You know, um, that's just a summary of what I'm about to present to you today. Um, first of all, I'd like to encourage you to continue to create something with the things that you learn in guitar. You know, don't be so stuck with a uh, with a curriculum or a lesson. You know, but use what you're actually learning to create something and that's where uh your skill gets more reinforced um and you know you, it actually sticks with you so let's get to it all right so um since i don't have a recording of your composition that you're trying to make um i'm just gonna have to give you some suggestions which if you you know, follow closely and uh, you understand what, you know, what I'm talking about. You know, it's just simple suggestions. Uh, you can even start sounding more expensive even right now, you know. So first thing is I want to bring up is family chords, right? You probably heard this before, diatonic chords, you know. Um, but there are conventions of how to execute these, you know, these uh these family chords say for the key of G, you know, um, I don't know if you're familiar with bar chords yet. Well, bar chords are a little hard to do and these not only are they hard to do, but they sound pretty flat, you know, but uh, there are open chord conventions. Okay. It, so of course you, you probably already know the, uh, the G open chord, which is, either like this right here or like this, right? So let's start from there. So the family chords of G in the key of G is of course your root chord is G. Then you have A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor, and then F sharp diminished and it goes back to G. All right, but uh, it's, it's important that you uh, learn um, all the open chords for those for all those chords right and keep it all in the first position um, and even at that uh, you know you can even start sounding more expensive than if you were to do it all in bar chords right see how flat that sounds right so let's do an open chord version of that right so start with G, right? And um, besides the shape or this shape, there's other shapes that you can use, you know, when you start with G. Um, if you simply bring down your index finger about two strings down, right? I'm not gonna name this chord for you. I don't want you to be so concerned about the names of chords, but I want you to familiarize yourself with the sound. Um, when you play this chord, you wanna miss the uh, A string over here, okay? You want to miss that, so. See, it sounds pretty cool, right? Okay, so that's one, another variation of the chord which you can apply, you know, just to um, give more, um, make it sound a little, just a little bit more cooler, right? So we have G, right, and then A minor. And another better version of that is if you just simply remove your ring finger off of that, now you have an E minor seven. This I apply more so often than just a regular E minor, okay? Because as I said, um, if you just do a regular E minor, this is kind of similar to a regular, like, um, you know, uh, bar chord that you use. It, it sounds flat, you know? At least if you remove your ring finger and just let that open G string ring, then now you have an added note to just your basic A minor chord. This is now an A minor seven, right? Now B minor, instead of doing a strict B minor like this, 
I'm just going to give you two, um, you're just going to put two fingers to the fretboard, right? Mm -hmm. This finger where your, your root note, where the B is at, and then this ring finger, um, you're going to go to the second string, third fret, and that's it. Strum down the four middle strings. That's all you're going to strum. If you'd like to add the E string, that's fine. All right? There you go. And then C, um, you have two options. You have a regular C, or as you mentioned in your question, a C add nine. Which now you're adding these two that, you know, from the original, uh, from your root chord G, all you have to do is move these two fingers down uh, one string, both of them. And now you have a C add nine. But you also have the option of just doing a regular C, right? Another option is removing your index finger, just leaving these two. Now you have a C major seventh, which this really sounds, you know, sounds lovely. Yeah, any major seventh chord sounds pretty, pretty lovely, right? Now you have the D, right? And you probably know this already is a regular D. Okay, that's an open, open chord D. But another thing you can do to make it sound more expensive is just remove your um, middle finger from that mix. Now you have a D2. Another variation of a D open string, uh, op yeah, open string version is if you're coming from a C, right? Just move two frets forward and you're going to get this kind of sound. This is a D7 and D7 sustained or something. As I said, I don't want you to be concerned about the name. I just want you to hear it. Already sounds very expensive, right? And then E minor, right? Rather than just doing your basic E minor, now I want you to imagine the middle finger going two steps, uh, two frets forward. Now you're gonna use your ring finger to do that, okay? And it's gonna sound like this. Here's your regular E minor flat, you know, already sad, yeah. But if you add this, Know, it's even more sadness to it now if you add your middle finger on the second string third fret to that mix right here you get this sound and I'm just gonna use my pinky instead of my ring finger where that string we just came from right mm. I use this structure a lot when I'm playing um, in the in a G major uh, scale. So there, um, right? And then um, F sharp diminished, I uh, kind of do a D2 structure with my um, middle finger and ring finger right here. See, this would be the D, right? But now I'm gonna substitute this um, index finger with my middle finger, boom, okay? And then my index finger is now gonna go to the very top. And this is an F diminished open, open, uh, open, open chord version, F sharp diminished, right? And then you go back to G. So let me, let me play all of that. And I'm just gonna, you know, play around with it give you know show you how i apply the different variations of you know each chord right a minor There 
you go. So if you were able to follow along, I bet um, in this recording you'll be able to have, um, you'll be able to watch and watch it again. Um, hopefully you can get that. <laughs> I wish I can actually uh, type down or give you a resource of, you know, the, the, the core charts of what I just did. Okay, so there are conventions. Um, open core conventions, those are the regular open cores, I, was, I would call it. But there's also another open core technique called uh, the pedal note. Um, basically, uh, when you're going, you know, you're playing the chords in the family, right? Uh, you'll have either one or two notes that stay in the mix. And in this example I'm about to give you, I'm going to keep these two fingers right here. Um, you know, they're, they're going to be planted there for, you know, as long as, as, long as the song is, um, is going. Uh, the only, the only, um, change that would happen is if I go to D, I may remove the pinky, right, and go back to my, um, to my middle finger. So I would do that kind of number. But um, the other chords would have this. And what that does, if you're, if you're composing something, you know, it and you're playing the guitar, it keeps sort of a unity, you know. Um, let me let me just give you an example, right? So here's G. Right? And A, a minor. B minor. C add nine is coming up next. Here's where everything changes, D. I can still actually keep that note there. Here's E minor, right? And then F sharp diminished. There you go, right? And then, um, you can you can still combine that you know uh, pedal noting whatever with your regular open chords that I just taught you you know uh, prior to the pedal note. Okay, so that's point number one. Familiarize yourself with the common open family chords of the key of G. Just by doing that alone, um, you don't even have to worry about you know. Um, trying all these com complex voices, you know, because just in that alone, I mean, just this B minor right here, this variant right here, this is not a strict B minor. It has other notes incorporated in it, and that's why it sounds so expensive. And it makes sense, you know, it's, it's not completely, you know, it doesn't, it's not a bad chord. It, you know, it, it mixes in well because it's part of the family, right? And then the next suggestion I would give you is um, this one. You're going to have to do some research on your own. Is study the family chords, the same family chords, but, you know, in their seventh form. And this one, you're going to have to be able to do um, a little bit more bar chording, right? But instead of just doing a regular bar chord, you know, strict bar chord, you're gonna be, um, you're just gonna be doing it a little bit differently. So if this is a regular G bar chord right here, right? You wanna imagine your pinky note going back one fret. And so now instead of this sound, you're gonna have this sound. It's a G major seventh. And you know, any, as I said before, any major seventh chord sounds lovely right and then of course next comes a minor but this time we're going to make it a minor seventh by removing our ring finger it sounds better it just generally sounds better right but there are some songs though that you still want to keep that a strict a minor um 
and that just comes by, you know, uh, you just have to kind of fill that one out. Um, here's a regular B minor, but we're going to remove, remove the pinky out of that mix. Right? And here's um, C major 7th, uh, D major 7th. Now there's two, there's two versions I do with this. Um, here's a regular D major 7th. But here's a variation, just a bar. And I'm going to show you um, an example later of how I apply this, and it sounds beautiful, right? And here is an E minor 7th. Okay. Here is an F sharp diminished. Uh, F sharp, it's uh, F sharp minor. Uh, it's F sharp minor 7 diminished 5th. You know, it's just a variation of the F sharp diminished. As I said, don't be so concerned about chords, uh, chord names right now. If you have to be concerned about chord names, at least memorize your G A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor, um, F diminished, G, and then the seventh forms of that, right? So from from this chord, we're going back to G, G major seven. And then you can, and I forgot to note that you can play that forwards and back. And then, of course, when you're composing, you can mix these chords whatever order you want. Um, just make sure that your melody, your singing melody, still makes sense <laughs> or is still in good, good order, right? Because, um, of course, how you arrange these chords is going to affect the way you sing. It's going to affect your singing melody. <clears throat> so you can play it backwards. All right. There we go. And then um, another thing, the third suggestion is occasionally, right? And don't do this all the time, but just to add more dynamic or tension or drama, if you will, um, Substitute a minor chord for the major chords of the family, right? And then a major chord for the minor chords of the family. <clears throat> and let me give you an example. So uh, in this example, I'm going to substitute a B minor with a B major seventh. Okay, a, a B dominant seventh, I should say. And then... I'm going to substitute a D for a D minor 7th, okay? And then on this example as well, I'm going to apply the D7 variation, right? I don't even know what this chord is called, to be honest with you. Okay, so this is a song by Tamiya. That's the artist. Uh, it's called officially missing here, right? So this is mostly going to be in the seventh family chords. It's not going to be in the regular open chords, right? So here we go. There's B7. B7. Um, that's D minor 7, I should say. I'm playing. So I start with a G major 7. Again, sounds lovely, right? And then instead of playing a um, <clears throat> an F sharp diminished, what the guitarist uh, originally plays in it is just uh, an F sharp minor 7, in fact, okay? So, but don't be too concerned about that. Um, I just want to show you substitution of major minor minor major right so here here's where the switch happens right after that 
F sharp minor seventh goes into a B dominant seventh, which is a major from you know this is this is the minor right. Instead on the on the song he does a B major sounding chord, okay, and then he goes to E minor, and then instead of passing through a regular D, right, he does a D minor seven into a G7, right? So the D minor seven, that's not part of the family, right? But he incorporates that to add some flavor, right? And of course, there's, a, there's another, there's other theoretical explanations to that, uh, but I don't want to confuse you too much on that, right? So then he goes into a C major seventh, another lovely chord. Then goes to an E minor, um, the third variation of that E minor that I taught you um, in open chord, right? This one. And then A minor seventh, and then that D7 variation. So let me do it again. got the idea. So uh, if you have any more questions, you can reach out to me at any time. Um, and I hope you learned something out of this. So peace and um, more luck in creating songwriting and everything like that. And your guitar learning as well, right?